Let's take a closer look at this uh, energy equation where we have the uh, a change in the energy of the overall energy of the system, which we know is uh, an abstract concept, which we further break down into its components, the change in its motion, kinetic energy, change in its gravitational potential energy, height, and gravitational field, uh, electric, charge, voltage, anything else you can think of, magnetic field, stress strain. There's a long list of energies you can think of the change in internal energy. That abstract change will be uh, observable as heat interactions and work interactions between the system and the surroundings. Now, let's think about this a little bit more carefully. Um, we can informally, at least, call these things what we might call accumulators. These would be equivalent to dollars in your bank account. Um, you accumulate, although it's abstract, we can't touch kinetic energy and potential energy. Nevertheless, we can think of it as a destination for jewels, just like a bank account is a destination for dollars. So we can think about those as the uh, accumulators. Now, uh, for the movement, well, movers, we can think of heat and work interaction as movers. So this would be equivalent to transactions of dollars in and out of a bank account. In that case, you only have one thing in or out. Here we have two ways to move things uh, from our accumulators. We can move them with a heat interaction or a work interaction or a combination of them uh, both. Um, uh, okay, so the last thing we have to think about are what I'll call uh, uh, tendencies. Tendencies, they indicate the extent of the movement. So, for example, a tendency would be uh, pressure. Uh, if there's a pressure differential between the system and the surroundings, well, the tendency then is for there to be uh, a movement of the system boundary physical wall through a volume. Um, a pressure through a change in a volume um, would be uh, 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 give you an energy term. Um, pressure times change in volume is joules, so that goes to the accumulators. Temperature is another tendency. It tells you the direction that the heat interaction is uh, uh, going to take uh, place. Now, when thinking about these accumulators, movers, tendencies, um, a, a formal word, by the way, is conjugate uh, variables for the tendencies, conjugate variables. Um, the idea there is that you have uh, some type of intensive quantity, uh, like a, a pressure, and some type of extensive property, like a change in volume. And when you multiply the two together, then you get um, uh, the uh, joules. Other conjugate variables are things like stress, strain, any force acting through a distance, um, or as we'll see later, uh, a temperature and change in, in, in entropy. But conjugate variables are uh, an, an, an intensive property that's the tendency so to speak the direction of change and then an extensive property which is the uh, uh, magnitude of that change when you multiply the two together you get a joule term which is then either a heat interaction or work interaction and shows up on the other side of the equal sign in the accumulators as some type of our abstract concept of uh, energy now, another thing related to this, as we go from some type of initial state to a final state, we can introduce the concepts here. We'll come back to them a couple of times. But we'll just introduce the concepts here of what we'll call uh, a state variable or, and a, a path variable. Let's introduce that. So if we go from some initial to final state, let's imagine we're at the bottom of some stairs and we climb to the top. And let's imagine those stairs come to a total of, uh, say, three meters. Well, you know that you've gone up three meters. So the height, regardless of how you did it, the final height you come to is what we call a state variable. In this case, that would be tied to a gravitational uh, potential energy if we were going upstairs, if we were going up, say, three meters. But you could ask the question, how did I go up those stairs? And that would be over here in your movers. You could say that I, if there were 10 steps, did I just go straight up 10 steps? That would be kind of the most straightforward, obvious way to do it, right? But I could have gone up seven steps, down three steps, and then back up six steps, 
and I would have gotten to the same destination, right? I would still have traveled a net of 10 steps or reached a three meter height. So the, the, the state variable over here is the same regardless if I just did 10 steps or if I just decided to do seven up, three down, six up, um, the final state is the same. So we call these things here in these accumulators, we call them uh, state variables because they have a final value, a difference between your initial state, in this case at the bottom of the stairs, and your final state, in this case the top of the stairs. But over here, it's going to be very important that Q and W are movers. They're going to be path variables. It depends on how we do it. If we just did 10 steps straight up, that would require uh, less net work than if we did seven steps up, three steps down, six steps up. Um, that requires more uh, activity on your part and more work. So the values of these actually depend on, on how you do it, the path that you take even as the final values, state variables, don't depend on the path that you take. And we'll, we'll discuss more. The state variable part of it's pretty clear. The path variable part we'll discuss some more on with a focus on heat interactions and work interactions, Q and W. A couple.